So today we are looking at Peter. Peter's letter. First Peter. How many of you love Peter? How many of you know his name before Jesus changed his name? Yeah, his name was Simon. Um, also, uh, I think it's uh, pronounced like Shimon, Shimon, and then, you know, Simon. Then Jesus changed it to Peter, you are the rock. Jesus changed his name to rock. And that translation is actually Pedros or Peter. Pedros in Greek. Um, in Aramaic, anyone want to have a go? I think it's pronounced Kiepas. Kiep Kaifas, yeah, K-E-P-H-A-S. Yes. Yeah. Right. So everyone now familiar with Greek and Aramaic, we can s speak familiar uh, with you know confidence now. <laughs> okay. So Peter writes this letter when he is in um, Rome, but he has renamed Rome to be Babylon because in Rome things are beginning to change. Things are beginning to shift, and it has become another Babylon. So he is writing this letter stating that I'm in Babylon. <laughs> okay, from Babylon, yeah? Uh, because, uh, you know, it is actually Rome. Uh, it, this uh, First Peter is a letter to all the churches, especially for Gentile churches. Specifically, he's over and over again uh, saying, uh, you know, Gentile church, Gentile church, you know. Okay, so this, um, these Gentile churches are being uh, persecuted, uh, gone through difficulty by, you know, the people who are uh, controlling them. Yeah, and their uh, persecution, you know, cruelty. Uh, hatred and all that is going on and uh, Peter wants to encourage this community it's a bit like now you know we are all going through difficulty that we are not comfortable and it's like I read this letter and I thought wow it's so um, you know relevant for today but that we are going through all these different struggles and uh, you know also persecution you know <laughs> Uh, you know, if, if if you say the wrong thing uh, over the internet or you know over media or over uh, you know there is persecution for you. You know I, you have to be politically correct, um, and uh, also because of your faith, people already prejudged you. They have got their own religion, uh, Christianity. They have defined their own Christianity. That means they don't read the Bible. They have already defined Christianity by hearing other people talk about and little bit here and there. Never read the Bible, what Christianity is all about. So we go through this difficulty. At this hour, everybody is angry with everybody because, you know, it's chaos. So it's the right time for this letter to be read. Amen. So I'm going to read this letter and go through some uh, you know, points, what Peter is trying to say, uh, which are, uh, you know, very important f for us. Amen? So I'm going to read from uh, the Good News Translation. I'll be omitting a few. Uh, the main reason why I took uh, Good News was I read um, NKJV and various others, but I thought uh, this is People will understand a lot better, uh, you know. So, um, I've omitted a, a few verses, so, you know, it just flows. So, not the whole thing, but I'm just going to read a few passages. Go, uh, to God's chosen people who live as refugees. How many of you know that we, yeah, 1 Peter 1. 
how many of you know that we are not permanent in this world? Some people think that we are permanent. Okay? Some people think, um, can I have my children's attention, please? Um, so some people think that this world that we live in is permanent. And we make decisions according to that. How many of you know that you're going to take a bag full of money when you go to heaven or hell? No, the answer is no. How many of you know that you're going to take a bag full of clothes? No. How about your house and your swimming pool? No. <laughs> but the, so he, uh, uh, Peter is talking to these people. They're actually refugees because the rulers over them, uh, you know, uh, are treating them like slaves. And they have gone uh, to those places. You were chosen according to the purpose of God, the Father, and were made holy people by the Spirit, by His Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be purified by His blood. My gosh, so much content in that. He calls them refugees, and he says, "You have been chosen." How many of you know that refugees are chosen? Nobody. Nobody will say refugees are chosen people. You think, oh, they don't have any identity. They don't have a land. They don't have anything. But, God, uh, but Peter is saying to these people, hey, you guys are chosen. So it, it applies to us in a time like this. We are chosen people. There's a purpose behind God has chosen. He has planned it already. Amen. And he has made holy by, he has made you and I holy. By how? By the Holy Spirit. By his precious blood washing of your sins. Amen. So when you're in this difficulty, you forget that you are a chosen person. You forget that you are washed by the precious blood of Jesus and you're holy. And you are set apart for the Lord. Amen. So that's what Peter is trying to, Peter is encouraging. So uh, my purpose for this passage is, to encourage people. Amen. And he's giving them a living hope. Uh, starting at uh, uh, verse 3. A heavenly inheritance. Let us give thanks to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he, has, he gave us new life. By raising Jesus Christ from the dead. This fills us with a living hope. And so we look forward to possessing the rich blessings that God keeps for his people. God has rich blessings for his people. Everyone agree? It is what it says in the Bible. He keeps them for you in heaven. Where is it kept? Your inheritance, your bonus, your every good deed that you've done, every, you know, uh, thing, uh, every, uh, your reward, all your, uh, you know, uh, results of what you've done in this world is the reward is waiting for you. In where? Heaven. Where are we? He keeps them for you in heaven where they cannot decay or spoil or fade away. They are for you who through faith are kept safe. How do you keep those possessions safe? Through faith, by God's power for the salvation which is ready to be revealed at the end of times. So what Peter is saying, when Jesus returns once more, how many of you believe Jesus is coming again? He's coming to judge the world. He's coming to judge, uh, judge you know, first the Christians and then uh, the world, you know. So uh, after that, this reward is going to be handed over to us. Amen. So verse 6. Be glad about this. Even though it may now be necessary for you to be sad for a while, 
because of many kinds of trials and suf you suffer, their purpose is to prove that your faith is genuine. So P Peter is saying, hey guys, this suffering that you are go going through, it is for a good cause. It's going to reveal whether your faith is genuine or a fake. Are you a fake Christian or a genuine Christian? That's what's going to determine when you go through these def difficulties. Without faith, it is difficult to please God. Even gold which, which can be destroyed is tested by fire. And so your faith, which is much more precious than gold, must also be tested. How many of you know to purify the gold? You put it through fire and all the bad stuff comes out, you know, uh, you know extreme heat. In, uh, like that, we, are go, we go through uh, trials and, you know, difficult times of our life so that what is inside will come out. You know, definitely what comes out is not that great. Yeah. So, um, so you know where you stand. It's like a mirror. So, uh, you uh, must also be tested so that it may endure. Then you will receive praise and glory and honor. What will you receive? Praise, glory, and honor. So this is like a promotion. This is like exaltation. This is like, hey, treasures in heaven. On the day when Jesus is revealed, your lo your, you love him, although you have not seen him. And you believe in him, although you do not see him. So you rejoice with great and gracious, uh, rejoice with a great and gracious joy, which words cannot express. Because you are receiving the salvation of your souls, which is the purpose of your faith in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Salvation is for your Soul. Amen. So then uh, verse 13, a holy calling. So everyone's called into this holy calling. So then have you uh, have your minds ready for action. Keep alert. It sounds like our prime minister. <laughs> Keep alert and set your hope completely on the blessings which will be given, uh, given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Be obedient to God and do not allow your lives to be shaped by those desires you had when you were still ignorant. Instead, be holy in all that you do, just as God who called you is holy. The scriptures say, be holy because I am holy. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I think it is uh, chapter 2. Living stones. How many of you know that you are a living stone? Rid yourself then of all evil. No more lying or hypocrisy or jealousy or insulting language. Be like newborn babies. Yes, Sean can relate to that. How is your newborn baby, Sean? Innocent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peter is saying, hey, be like that, you know, completely dependent on your father, you know, and the mother for the baby. <laughs> always thirsty for pure spiritual milk. Babies always, ah, I want it, I want it. How many of you cry for spiritual word, spiritual <laughs> word? Uh, yeah, not really, isn't it? Oh, it's... Oh. It's the word, I had to read the word. But you should be hungry and desiring that. Where are we? Uh, so that by drinking it, you may grow up and be saved. So it is important that you need to drink spiritual milk. Where do you find spiritual milk? 
in the Bible. The right answer. Thank you. Just as God who called you as holy. Oh, sorry, I just, sorry, I jumped. Uh, as the scriptures say, you have found out for yourselves how kind the Lord is. Verse 4. Come to the Lord, the living stones rejected by people as worthless but chosen by God as valuables. How many of you can relate to that? You know, people don't take notice. People don't care. People uh, don't know who you are. But God has noticed you, has chosen you. God thinks, uh, God thinks highly of you. Isn't it? So he has chosen, but the people have rejected. It's amazing. You know? Which is more important? Accepted by people or accepted by God? But people always want to know what people think. And want to react, you know, in a certain way to please people. But you have to just focus on the main person, that is God. Come as living stones, not as dead stones. Please come as living stones. Let yourselves be used in the building, the spiritual temple, where you will serve a holy priest, serve as holy priests to offer spiritual and acceptable sacrifice to God through Jesus Christ. So what are you to do? Offer spiritual sacrifice. For the scriptures say, I have I, uh, I choose a valuable stone which I'm placing as the cornerstone in Zion City Church. I mean Zion. <laughs> and whoever believes in him will never be disappointed. This is your Bible which says if you believe in Jesus, you will not be disappointed. Very hard for people to understand this. Faith is believing in Jesus. That means you shouldn't be worried. If you're worried, you're putting your faith to test. Amen? We all worry, you know, it's not, you know. But then we switch to the focus of Jesus because he has said it in his word, we will not be disappointed. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, let's run through some of the other ones. Uh, Stop reading. And uh, let me just quickly. Okay, so P uh, Peter is giving them a new identity. What is the identity? We living stones. And identity is we have joined a family. Identity is it is. We have joined God's family. We are God's children. We have to remember. Although we are refugees, also we are rejected, although we are going through hardship and all that, we are of God's family. Amen? So, our focus should be one, Jesus' return. He's going to come to judge. So what, was, what must we do? S be ready for that coming. You know, people mock and, you know, uh, they say, hey, where, well, he said he's coming. But the Bible says Jesus is patiently waiting because he wants everyone to be saved. Not just the few. So the waiting is because he is waiting for more to come. So anytime it says in the Bible, he comes like a thief in the night. He will come. So people will say he's coming tomorrow, he's coming. No one knows, but he will come like bam. <laughs> he's here. So be ready at all times. Amen.
So he also mentions how uh, God's chosen people were people from Abraham. You know, I will make a great nation. They are my people. I'm keeping them for myself. And uh, 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 Peter is saying, you are of that linear age, that you are of Abraham. You possess all the blessing. You possess all God's promise. And you are chosen. Amen. And he's also uh, uh, bringing to them the remembrance how the Israelites from captivity, from Egypt, they went into the promised land. He's giving them uh, another scenario. Hey, you remember the people who were in captivity and they were going into uh, the promised land? Likewise, you're going into this promised land that you're going to settle. You're going to be where there is milk and honey and, you know, all that, you know, everything is amazing, you know. That is in the Old Testament. But he's saying this heavenly, uh, you know, new uh, Jerusalem um, uh, is going to be so amazing. There is no tear. There is full of joy and hope and love and, you know, all that, you know. He's comparing that, you know. In the past, they went through wilderness and it got into the promised land. He's also mentioning how, uh, you know, people of the old and Noah's time, how the eight people or seven people, they got saved by getting into the boat. They were all submerged. And he's saying, hey, you are also that kind of people who went into the baptism of water, which is not a ritual, but it is a promise unto God that you have changed your mind, you have changed your heart towards God. Okay. Right, where are we with the time? Okay, no problem. So he's also saying this persecution that you're going through is bring clarity for your life. You are put in this world for a mission, for a purpose. You know, so when we go through this tough time, it's going to give purpose for your life, clarity, your mission. And as a church, it'll give refocus for us or, uh, you know, mission, uh, what we need to do. You know, all this suffering and, uh, and uh, you know, when we go through all this. So it's going to give purpose for your life. Why you are here. Yeah. So one is to uh, make sure your faith is genuine. Next one is to check that, uh, give clarity to your uh, uh, mission uh, or your calling. Amen. So these are good things Paul is trying to say to these guys. Hey, cheer up. It's all good stuff, you know. It's only temporary. How many years? 180. That's all you have to deal with in this world. But you're going to cross over into the heaven. And there you're going to live eternal life. You know, forever. Which is, we can't even put a, a number to it. You know, forever and ever. Which is more important? Where you're going to live forever and ever or this temporary 80 or 100 years? Forever is more important. So he's giving them a, a new hope and a new joy that one, Jesus Christ is coming. And also uh, this persecution, if you are not going to come through in this world, there is always hope for you on the next. Amen? Cool. All right. And also this, uh, uh, this going through the tough time is good for you because it will test your faith and give you refocus. Amen? Right. And he also says this, you know, outside influence, you know, like the virus and all this. Hey, don't put the blame on the rulers or authority or people who are in charge of you and who are giving you hard time. 
but it is actually manipulated by the principalities and powers of the darkness. So he's saying, Peter is saying, hey guys, watch out. Don't take it on, on these people because they have been in influenced by these evil powers. Instead, you know, uh, do the opposite. Show love and generosity. How many of you like to show generosity for your enemy? <laughs> How many of you want to show love to your enemy? Okay, this is what Paul is, uh, Sir Peter is saying. Guys, you need to change the attitude. He's saying, by your behavior, there is a possibility that these guys might change their heart. Yeah, amen. So, uh, and also he's going into how wives, you know, be submissive to your husband again. I don't know why Paul and Peter, everyone want to say it. But mainly, um, they want to state that is, according to the Romans, the man of the house has full control over the household. And that control is like everybody else is his slave. So Paul is saying no. Uh, he's first addressing the women to be, you know, uh, you know, show respect to your husband. But at the same time, Paul is saying, treat your wife like equal, uh, like the weaker being. Make sure she's looked after, like you. Amen? Cool. And he's also reminding them, hey guys, don't forget, if you think you are suffering, think about our Savior. He went through all the suffering for you. Basically, you and I send him to the cross for our bad stuff that we've done. You know, but he took it upon himself to pay for your, yours and mine, you know, all the bad stuff. So our relationship with the Father will be restored. But think about that. Jesus went through this suffering for us. I'm sure you can put up with this. Amen? And he's saying, even if you're killed, don't worry. You'll be in heaven. Amen? Right. I think that's about it. So, when we move on to the heaven or when Jesus returns, we are going to, we are victorious. We are glorious. We, we will be seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Amen. So the enemy is the defeated one. Who is our enemy? It's the devil. <laughs> it's the demons. You know, all evil powers. It's not the people. They are being used. So in the end, uh, the good news is, hey, you're on the winning side. You know? You have built up riches in heaven. There's a, you know, assurance. There's a palace. There's, I don't know. It's going to be glorious. You know, when you go there, you're going to be chilled. <laughs> Relaxed. No stress. Everybody will love one another. It's like a love city. <laughs> God's love will overpower everything. No sickness. No disease. You know, no paying bills. How many of you love that? <laughs> You know, no credit cards to pay, uh, no enemies there, <laughs> no one to worry about. You know, we are going to a beautiful place. Peter is saying, hey, put your focus there. It's going to happen. It's going to be there. Forget this. It's temporary. It'll be gone soon. Amen.